But what's really cool too, is that because they're so old, and we've been singing them so long, that people sing them all over the world. So we can go to a foreign country, and they might not be singing in a language that we know, but we know the tune, and we know what they're talking about. So it joins us with those people of uh, our ancestors, but also people all over the world. But we have these traditional songs, and as we said last week, St. Paul's Lutheran Church is a blended worship service. So we, we love that tradition and we hold on to it. But we also are interested in new and different ways of experiencing the holy. And one way we do that Saturday night at the end of service, we always sing Spirit of the Living God. And we hold hands in a circle right around the center aisle. And it's a new tradition. People really, really love it on Saturday night. They feel God in that, and they feel led. And that's the whole point of worship, is that God, through all of these parts, lead us to Jesus Christ. But it's important not to just see all the little parts. I mean, we're going to be studying them, but it's also important to see the bigger picture. For example, when I... When I read the John text, and I said, Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, how many started to sing in their heads? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, I'm there. Yeah. But it's also, so the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, it comes from John 1. And so we sing that to help us remember John 1, but also to help us understand who God is and what God is doing in the world. So again, just looking at the Agnew Dei, or Lamb of God, is important. But it's also important to see where it is in the bigger picture. We say it after communion. So it connects communion to that hymn. So we hear in communion that Jesus Christ died on the cross. And so we share in his body and his blood because we share in that crucifixion, that death, so then we have eternal life. And in that death, we, Jesus conquers sin so that we're no longer slaves to sin. But we are cleansed of that sin through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then all of a sudden we say, Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And so it's interesting when I ask people, why did Jesus die on the cross? They look at me and they say, to take away the sins of the world. And then I go, Whoa! What does that mean? And they go, I don't know, but I know it's right because we sing it in worship. <laughs> and it's true. But it, so worship gives us that foundation to be able to go, okay, I kind of understand. But now God is leading me once again to Christian education because I don't actually know what a lamb of God is and I don't understand how a lamb can take away the sin. So then we go to confirmation or Sunday school or adult education and we learn about what all this means. But we got that foundation from worship. God led us to Jesus Christ through all of these parts of worship. So when we take a step back and we see the bigger picture of what worship is trying to do, what God is leading us to through worship, we get a better idea of who is this God and what is this God trying to do in my life and in the church. So worship connects us to our ancient ancestors, to other people throughout the world, but also it teaches us who God is and what God is doing in the world and that helps God to lead us to Jesus Christ. So we're going to continue this epiphany season to study the individual parts of worship so that we can better understand how those parts of worship lead us to Jesus Christ and to what God is trying to do through us in the world. Amen. <laughs>